Hey there, it's Micah Lipsmeyer once again coming at you with another lesson. This is video number two in this series that I am doing with one of my instructors, Seth Lecoq, who's a phenomenal guitar player. Uh, this is video number two, so if you missed video number one, just a quick recap of what we were covering in it, I highly encourage you to go back and watch it, uh, either in the last email from me, if you get my emails, or on our Facebook page, it'll be there as well. Uh, and the YouTube channel, the 90 Day Guitar Facebook, 90 Day Guitar YouTube channel. But we discussed, we were discussing how to jump in and jam uh, with other musicians in a band situation even if you've never rehearsed what you're playing. We talked about how to steal rhythmic and melodic ideas from the other players that are right there with you that you're playing with. So how to steal from them right there as everything's going along and how that's actually going to make your guitar playing, your lead playing sound very nice while you're doing it. How to keep you from running out of ideas. We also talked about uh, learning easy versions of multiple songs and how learning multiple easy versions of songs is actually going to make you a much better player in much more difficult situations. So you don't want to miss that. Very, very good stuff. We also, last thing we talked about was theory, music theory, and how important it is to even just have just a little bit and uh, just get a little bit of music theory to start out and then as you, as you grow as a player and gaining more and more, it's going to help you that much more. But one thing that you do want to remember when you're learning theory is you don't just want to have it here, okay? You want to make sure that it comes from here down to here. Just having the head knowledge is not going to benefit you. Make sure that you keep you get your playing up to par. Playing is first, theory is second. It's not the other way around because if you, if you get them backwards, you can get addicted or just hooked on that, continuing to learn, but that doesn't ever help your playing. I, and, I, and we talked a little bit about um, how, I've, how I've seen so many students that, that do that. They know a lot here, but that, that doesn't translate to their guitar. So you don't want to be like that. In this video, we're going to be talking about one of the most important aspects of lead guitar playing that most intermediate players and even beyond that have a very, very big struggle. And uh, it's very important for all of us to focus here and fix these issues. We're gonna be talking about that in this video. We also talk about having fundamentals, getting yourself a set of fundamentals that you continue to work on and continue to improve over time and how important that this is actually going to be in helping you in the long run. And then finally, we get into the absolute most important part of lead guitar playing and that is guess what it's not scales it's not notes it's rhythm all right here the rhythm hand is the most important part of your lead guitar playing so we're going to have all that coming up right here uh, with Seth and at the end once again I'm going to be back with a, a, another just a little bit of a deeper dive into what we've discussed and some in helping you actually get a few notes or whatever so that you can actually take away and use today in your guitar playing so stay tuned for that now this interview this part this interview part with Seth is about 12 minutes ish long so I just like to give you a heads up that's what it's going to be and then I'm going to be back afterwards uh, with the rest of it of getting some one-on-one -on -one help are just huge. With help from somebody who's already been there, done that, and helped other people get from here to here, you can be taught to do the right things right now versus you trying to find out what those right things should be over the next couple years, you know. So you can be, you can skip a lot of time uh, of looking and searching, especially of doing things that are not going, are not really for you. What kind of guitar players do you feel like you uh, really do excel in helping become uh, get to higher levels where they are and what they're and then getting to a next higher level uh, what type of issues might they be having uh, or, or where they struggling to make certain connections things like that I think most of the people that I, I kind of I feel like I do that's with when I teach it's like you say that intermediate player that guy who has been playing for a couple years you know he can play his own song play through songs knows the names of his chords but is really looking to to tie it all together and understand kind of how things are working a little bit better. It's that guy who, like I said, is at a fork in the road, whether he's going to 
he's going to just be a guitar player. He's going to delve into kind of trying to be a little bit more of a musician. Uh, and, and of course, that has a lot to do with kind of the understanding the theory, the theory part, too. But it, it also, you know, just has to do with, like I say, bringing it back to, to getting used to doing the same stuff, right? Getting real consistent, getting real. And not only the same with a practice schedule, but with the way you move, the things you do, right? Mm. I know a lot of people will come in and play something, and then they'll play it different the next week. And then they'll play, they won't play it different the next week. It's like, you know, you, when you're building the muscle memory and stuff, you want things to, to pretty much remain the same. Uh, I guess the other really big thing I'd say that I noticed probably and definitely in my own playing, but with almost everybody I sit down in front of, when we sit down and play guitar, what's the first thing we do? We look at our left hand. Uh, we're playing with our fret hand, right? Guitar players always do that. We pay almost no attention to what's going on with our picking hand, say, especially if we're playing leads or stuff like that. Uh, so one thing I always try and do is just shift people's attention. You know, of course, this left hand is super important. That's where we're making the notes, right? Mm -hmm. But guitar player's right hand often gets overlooked. Like I said, I've even had to spend a ton of time in my own playing fixing a ton of bad habits that I started when I taught myself as a teenager, because uh, I was more or less thinking only in my left hand, you know, so I had to spend years, really, to be honest with you, to correct mm. the thing, because as I, the more I started playing, especially I get out and start gigging, people want you to, you know, people might want you to play certain songs, Some, somebody might call Crazy Train or something like, ridiculous like that, Yeah. you know, all of a sudden, that's a whole new set of problems with this right hand that's never been addressed, so yeah. <clears throat> getting back to that point of failing, like, you know, you fail, and then you realize the things that you might need to look at. And not just me, but I've noticed just, you know, tons and tons of guitar players. Nobody really pays attention to their pick and hand as, as much as they should, at least. Yeah, I got that same uh, same same thing. In fact, it, it's funny that you uh, that you say that because that's actually over the last few months. That's exactly something that I have been doing. And this is actually the second time, the second point in my guitar playing career that I've actually gone back to address my picking hand you know probably about probably about 10 years in i made some adjustments which helped me which were good um and now i'm i'm seeing again for certain things that i i'm wanting to do now uh that old habits are not are not benefiting so that that picking hand i realize wow i got i gotta that's not how i should be doing that i, I should be doing and that shouldn't be, that just shouldn't be an upstroke there that should be another down you know yeah. Kind of sometimes thing. you don't know, you know, the things you even need to work on until you cross that, you know, until you say you get to that song where you're trying to play something, and you're like, man, this is impossible, you know, this, how did this guy do this? Yeah. How did he, how is he playing that fast? How is he playing that clean? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So it's like, sometimes you don't know the things you should want to work on or should work on until you reach them in your own yeah. playing, right? That's why it's like, it gets back to the point of, you know, if they're a beginner, there's no point in talking about theory stuff with them. Because it's like they're not at that spot in their own playing yet, right. you know. So it's almost, it's in a weird way. It's like people can almost, uh, as the teacher, you can sit back and just talk and let them kind of guide you in what direction, <laughs> just with their own understanding, you know. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. I know what you're saying. Getting them, they're kind of giving you what they want, and you're going, okay, you, you you're here and you want to be here. Let's fill in these blanks. Fill in that blank. Yeah. If yeah. you want to get here, if you want to play this, then we need to, you know, spend a month or two doing this kind of stuff. Yeah. Which can, which can, you know, stress some people out, but it's like, that's putting in time, man, you know? Yeah. It, takes, it takes time to build up the muscle memory to be able to do stuff. The good news is, though, is that they, hey, this is what you need to do. You're not yeah, doing something yeah. that may not even get you there, you know? And, and look, I went down that wrong path. I went down the wrong, doing the wrong thing and following, think, thinking that was correct. This is what I should do for years, you know, like I said. And then you have to go back. So that's going to be the benefit of having, say, somebody like us right in front of you you can cut down on that chance that you might develop a bad technique, right? You'll have to undo. Because you have to undo. And like so you I, said... I'm like having somebody looking at you saying, oh, you know, that should probably be down, up, down, up, da-da-da, or whatever. Right. You know? It'll be a lot easier for you to do. Not to say... I always, I always tell people this, too. It's like, you know, you can do things however you want, but the, if you want it to be the easiest, you might have to work twice as hard to get it the way you're doing it. But, you know, if you do it this way, it'll take you half the time. Right. That idea of just, you know, being able to look at somebody and, and see what's what's going on with them and point them in the direction they need to go, right? Oftentimes what feels natural and right to the earlier player 
the advanced, the more advanced player knows that even though that feels better to you right now, it's going to hinder you as soon as you get to here. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. You, and then you're going to have to go back and do what I, I was telling you to do right here. So you, you can you can back, take it either way, you know. You want to kind of you want to kind of limit the amount you have to do that um, when you go through your own play, and you know what I mean. The less you have to to go back and and, and redo things you already done. But I use this analogy too, man. I used to play a lot of sports when I was in high school. I'd walk into basketball practice every day. What do they do? What's the first thing you work on when you go to practice? Fundamentals, right? You don't mm-hmm. come out and start trying to run plays and doing stuff. Why is guitar playing any different, right? You come out, you sit down, you need to work on fundamentals. Yep. Bounce know? pass, chest pass, bounce pass, bounce pass. pass. chest pass. Yeah. <laughs> simple stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. You start off doing simple stuff, but that doesn't mean the more you progress that you quit doing the simple things. Right. 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 Keep that fund your fundamental techniques of what you're playing clean and for lack of a better word, repetitive, especially with things like in your right hand. You know, I, t- I use the I tell people all the time, it's almost like I want to completely disconnect myself from from my right hand to where it's like I've got it. I've got it figured out already in my patterns and stuff I want to use. But it's like it gets back to the idea of chunking. You don't want to sit there and have to think of down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, 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 down, up. You know what I mean? That's way too much. That's right. way too much. Right. To do it with time, so you just chunk it down. Think I got to hit my downstroke right here, and then everything else will follow. Yeah, as long as you, you know. <laughs> yeah, and I've seen it. I've seen. I know exactly what you're talking about. I've seen it myself, and I've seen it. Um, I've seen it in so many students. You know, so many students. You know, people are going up and down when they needed to be going down, down, down. You know, some that, that happens so often because you learn about alternate picking. Which yes, alternate picking is a thing. We all need to be able to do it and do it well. Sometimes, though, when you're doing it, that's not when you should be doing it kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, and it, and it'll, oftentimes it costs you accuracy. It'll cost you speed. It'll cost you um, accents, you know, if that makes any sense. to. I know it makes sense to you, but it may, oh, makes totally. sense to a lot of other people, but some people might not quite know what that is, but don't worry about it. Um, so um, tell me this, and, and we've, I know we've already kind of covered this, but I want to directly ask the question. Uh, just so other people, in, in case they're right here, they're, um, they can get it directly. Where do you feel that most players struggle when it comes to playing lead guitar? Well, it, it would probably get back to the right hand thing. Uh, for years and years, man, I was what, what I thought of as, as you know a legato kind of player. Legato, if anybody doesn't know, it just means you're hammer-ons and you pull-offs, right? Mm-hmm. In other words, I'm not going to be doing as much of the alternate picking stuff. I'm going to let my left hand take a lot of the work. I might only pick once and play four notes in my left hand, etc. I think a lot of people, like I say, it's the right hand. I think a lot of people uh, don't focus on rhythm as often as they should. Rhythm is, I mean, the paramount. If you can't play in time, then it's going to be hard for you to play anything, period. Mm. These are uh, chords. So even just something as simple as the first, anytime I learn a song with somebody, before we talk about a chord, a note, the absolute first thing we do is find the count, right? One, two, three, four, or if it's in three, six, whatever, how fast it is, how what BPM it is, right? Yeah. Because rhythm is what, is, you have to have the rhythm first before you can start looking as to what notes we're going to play, right? Because mm. notes by themselves are just notes. When you put notes and rhythm together... Now we got something called music, <laughs> you know? So it's like you can't forget about uh, your rhythm, right? Even even basic stuff or learn how to do, you know, crazy rhythms, you know? 12 eights, 16 eights, kind of just stuff that you're not going to run across as much. But just simple stuff, being able to count to four, being able to play in time, you know? And yeah. that doesn't necessarily mean sitting there with a metronome and boring yourself to death. There's a million different ways that you can develop your time, you know? One thing I tell people all the time is learn rhythm without a guitar in your hand. Everybody has a radio in their car. Uh, if you're driving down the road, count to four while you listen to that song. Find where the beat is. Find yeah. where your tempo is, right? Find that pulse. Start getting used to that. Because the sooner you can kind of uh, understand, or not really understand, just be able to feel feel the rhythm, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Where the snare hits, right? That kind of stuff. Just be able to feel the rhythm. It'll, it'll make it easier for you to play stuff. Because if not, like I say, it's just a barrage of notes, <laughs> you know? Oh, Lord. Yeah, I, I know. That's another thing that, uh, again, it's another thing that I've 
just like you're saying, I, I have to hammer that with my students. And oftentimes, one thing that I tell them is, think of this hand, your rhythm hand, as your drum. Like, when you yeah. hear that, you oh. hear that low, you hear the boom, pop, boom, pop. You want to be going boom, 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 pop but on your strings. You want the low, then you want this high pow, which is usually going to be on your higher strings. Um, and then you have those other things in between sometimes, you know, those, you teach this hand to play drums on your guitar, basically. Right. Um, because exactly what you said, if you, if your rhythm sucks, your lead sucks. It's, yeah. it, you're not, you can't play good lead if you can't play good rhythm. It's always better too if a, if a student comes in and they say, "Oh well, I've played the uh, drums before. I'm a drummer or something. I played drums." I say, "Well, great. Perfect. You're already the leg up. If you can just if you have rhythm, if you can count to four, right? If you really think about the stuff, you're you're thinking you're cutting your guitar, turning it into a drum set, right? Yep. Kick drum, top part would be like your snare, and then like that eighth note hi hat thing would be your up and down strumming. Uh -huh. Your accents would be where it is. Start yep. thinking like a drummer, especially if you're playing acoustic guitar, strumming that kind of stuff, whatever." Mm -hmm. You're basically sounding like a drum to begin with, yep. but you'll never, you'll, you know, I shouldn't say you'll never, it'll be, a, you'll have a lot harder road if you don't have solid rhythm, if you're trying to go the lead guitar route. But that also comes back to that right hand stuff, man, making sure that right hand is solid, you know, yeah. that rhythm is over here, the rhythm is over here. Yeah, yeah, that, man, that's, that's, Guitar players, and I will say it again, uh, especially your like around your intermediate and even your beginner level, uh, but really it applies more to your intermediate level. They they so often do not realize how how important that is. Uh, that's that's huge. I gotta tell you, I love doing these things because even myself, I just I get so much from talking to other guitar players who have just been around the block a few more times than I have. Or, uh, or just have some different insight on, or different perspective on whatever. So this has been, this is great, and we've uh, actually got more coming up, so stay tuned. But real quick, um, if you can, I encourage you to take a few little notes right here if you haven't already been doing that, because what I wanna retouch on is where most players are struggling when it comes to lead guitar playing. And like Seth was talking about in this part was the picking hand, your rhythm hand is where uh, he's had a lot of struggles and I have had tons of struggles here. I've, I still struggle here, so I still have to go back and start focusing on it again. And like I said in this video, this is actually something that for the last little while I've actually been doing again because I'm seeing how sloppy I uh, have been becoming through not really working on it, through not really paying attention to it. So when you're focusing on cleaning up your picking hand, one thing that I see a lot of players doing is when you're working on alternate picking especially, a lot of times they'll be going down, up, down, up, down, but there'll be like pauses, like they'll, they'll go down and then they'll, if there's a gap in the notes, they'll just leave their hand down and then they'll bring it up. So they'll go ba, 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 instead of ba, ba. Ba, 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 ba. I don't know if you could quite tell what I'm doing, but your hand needs to be moving consistently, staying consistent with the beat. So if you're playing a quarter note, it's down, 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 down. It's not down, up, down, up. If you're playing eighth notes, it's it might be down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Or if you're playing 16th notes, it might be down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And then if you threw an eighth note in there, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, it wouldn't be down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. See what I'm saying? So just because you, you one note is longer than than another, that doesn't mean your hand pauses. Okay, you would come if you had a downstroke and there was a pause there, you would come, you would move the hand still, and you'd come back for another downstroke. A lot of us do things like this, and it messes up our consistency, and it messes up our speed. It also messes up our accuracy. So we you want to be paying attention to these types of things. Another thing to think about is: Are you hitting the string or strings that you want to hit? Are you only hitting what you want to hit and are you hitting what you want to hit? If you're hitting more than you want to hit, you want to create exercises, create little routines for you to practice hitting if you're wanting to get better at hitting two strings at a time. Create exercise for this, three strings, one string, okay? Different types of, of movements that you're wanting to make, you're wanting to create exercises that make them a repetitive motion for you so you can develop muscle memory that's going to make you sound better and for myself it's going to make me sound better as well another thing does it sound clean 
clean it up. You know, is it thumpy? Is it, uh, are you muting it? Or is it buzzy? Or is it, uh, is it, is it ringing when you don't want it to ring? Okay. Those are things that you want to think about and fix them. Okay. Every, all those different details are going to take different things to fix them. Okay. But you have to dig down and see, all right, what's going, what's really going on here? Why am I getting all this noise? Or why am I getting this weird noise? Or why am I not getting the sound that I want to get? Okay, you got to break them down and really focus and create yourself an exercise to make that happen for you. And if you're not really sure how to do that, if you're not sure how to make an exercise, or if you can't figure out what it is that's giving you the problem, it's a good idea for you to break down, spend a little money on an instructor that can look at you in your exact situation and help you with that. Okay, And we can do that here as well. If that's something you're interested in, be sure to let me know because we can definitely help you to do that. It doesn't mean that you have to take consistent lessons every week or uh, whatever, but somewhat consistent is going to keep you moving uh, along more quickly. So you, these things don't trip you up and keep you down for as long a period of time. But a single lesson every one month, every two weeks, every every two or three months even, a lot of times that's all you need to just to move just a little bit further, to clean, to clear up any questions or uncertainties that you have, to make sure that you're moving in the right direction, that you're doing the right things, that you're not practicing doing things badly. In other words, I always say that you're getting good at doing something badly, the bad, the wrong way. Uh, you don't want to do that. You don't want to spend a lot of time. So make sure that you're getting some help here and there to help uh, make sure that you're not having that. Make sure that, that that's not happening for you. Okay, so. Another thing that we talked about, fundamentals. What are fundamentals? We talked about like basketball and things like that. Drills, basically. They're kind of boring, but what they're going to do is they're going to help you perform under pressure. They're going to help you perform correctly. They're, you're building muscle memory. It's not coming from here as much. At first, you have to learn the fundamentals, so it does come from here. But after a while, it just becomes a muscle memory. So having things that we call fundamentals in your routine are going to make you better faster. And as you grow, your level of fundamentals are going to change. They should become higher. You know, They should incorporate... Uh, theory and interval types of licks and ideas. Uh, but as you do them and as you understand them uh, and then you you pr practice doing them in time, cleanly with the music, and then building speed after that. Fundamentals that are growing in difficulty as you move along your guitar journey are very, very important to helping you get better much more quickly. So Ask yourself, what are your fundamentals? What are your current fundamental exercises? If you don't have any, you need to get some, okay? You need to get some. And again, that's also something that a, an instructor can help you with for good ones for you at your level. And with, then they can explain to you why they're good for your level and how you want to apply those uh, to your playing, where they're going to help you when you're playing music. Those are really, really good things. And then, of course, again, staying in time. Fundamentals, you need to practice these things in time. With music, with a drum beat, with a metronome, however, it, they just need to be in time. And then, of course, building speed. After, after, after you can stay in time and rhythm, you build speed. And then, of course, the faster you get, the hard, a lot of times it's, it's, it becomes hard again to stay in rhythm. So those are things that you, you work together. And then, finally, we talked about the most important aspect of lead guitar playing, and that is rhythm. It's rhythm. It's not all this. It's not all your your what your fingers, your fretting hand is doing, but it's the rhythm. It still comes back to what's going on over here. One single note played in a cool rhythm can sound much more tasteful and much cooler than all these other notes, okay? It, it's just a fact, okay? You don't need a lot of notes when you got a really a really good rhythm and that's what uh, licks and riffs are all about you know it's not all it's not about necessarily big long runs and things like that it's just about tastefully playing and we talked a little bit about uh, that, that's kind of like what BB King does you know a lot of other instruments they don't have as many frets and notes that we have on guitar so they have to utilize this a, uh, a lot and we as guitar players don't think about it as much because we do have so many notes and frets to think about uh, but 
we we don't focus on this hand nearly as much and we don't think about the rhythm that we are doing things in so rhythm is huge and how can you work on this rhythm stuff at home well rhythm is something that we have to build in internally inside of ourselves yes it comes to our hand here but it also needs to be a part of you a part of your your body motion and you want to practice this when you're driving in your car listening to music, counting one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, tapping your finger on the steering wheel, tapping it on your leg or whatever, you should always be counting and tapping when you're listening to music. If you're going to play guitar, if you're going to be a good guitar player, if you're going to be a good musician, you should always be working rhythm. And, it does, and then when, you get, when you're feeling good about one, two, three, four, your eighth notes, your sixteenth notes, all those things. Um, those are things you start to work in and then mixing and matching note sizes, quarter notes, half notes, 16th notes, whole notes, all, mixing them up. Okay, Those are things that you can also do when you're listening to radio. Another way to do it that I have a lot of my students do is if you're exercising or jogging, walking or jogging or doing reps or whatever, when you play music, when you're doing your workout, whatever type of steps or ref, reps you're doing, move to the beat. Bop. Bop, bop, bop. If you need to increase your step length or shorten your step length to make it work with the beat, do it. Move with the beat or your reps. Lighten your weights or, or uh, increase your weights to make sure that you're getting the right times in. That's helping your body to, to develop rhythm. Rhythm in yourself that works with the music. So those are some really good tips that you can use when you're not even playing music to actually make you a better musician. And the last thing that I want to remind you as guitar players about with, with rhythm is using your guitar as a drum or your guitar strings as a drum. You know, use them as boom, pop, boom, pop, boom, pop. This is going to make the way you sound, uh, the way you play sound much more entertaining rather than just hitting everything at one time or rather than just hitting the same strings all at one time. It's going to sound better and your beats are going to, uh, your, your, your rhythm that you use on your rhythm hand is going to sound more interesting when you think of this hand as if you're playing drums on your guitar. So anyway, I hope you got a lot out of this lesson. This is a lot of really, really good, very good tips in this one single lesson. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed it. Now, we've got another lesson coming for you very soon. We're going to be talking about um, some, actually some, some more, a few more pro tips actually on uh, practicing and um, in, in struggles and failing and things like that coming up. So stay tuned. Uh, I really think you're going to have a good time and enjoy and learn a lot as we uh, get ready for the next one. Stay tuned for that. And of course, give this video a like, a thumbs up, comment, and share with your friends. Let me know if you have any questions or if you need any help on anything we talked about. Let me know in the comments below. Anyways, I'm going to see you in the next video.